And so, Tim, I've invited Tim in today because I want to talk about a, a subject that uh, is uh, one of my favorite things having to do with the pedal steel. We're going to call this um, today's topic Open String Magic. Hello and welcome I'm here in the Steel Lab today with special guest Tim Crispin. He is the owner here at Stage Volume Entertainment where we film the Steel Lab series. He's also uh, uh, one of the piano instructors here as well as a drum instructor. Correct. And he's also responsible for all the fine video editing that you see in all of our uh, uh, Steel Lab's uh, series videos. So Tim is the, the guy that makes all that magic stuff happen. And uh, Tim, if you would, tell us just a little bit about your music education and background. All right. Well, uh, so I have um, been playing basically uh, 20 years professionally, uh, mostly doing drums. Um, but uh, I went to, to college for a few years and got uh, a degree in music performance and then also in composition and songwriting. Awesome. So uh, I actually started teaching as soon as I got out of college. So I've been teaching and playing for a little over 20 years now. All right. And so, Tim, I've invited Tim in today because I want to talk about a, a subject that uh, is uh, one of my favorite things having to do with the pedal steel. We're going to call this um, today's topic Open String Magic. And uh, I'm a big fan of the usage of open strings on the pedal steel. And I've invited Tim here today with the keyboard because as we go through along here, I'm going to have Tim play some little examples of things from time to time and let you hear what it sounds like compared to what I'm playing on the pedal steel. And uh, it's also going to help me go through and explain a little bit about some um, so music theory fundamentals that you know Tim's going to help us get into as we as we cover some of these things about open strings in the pedal steel. So um, one of the first things I want to talk about is there are a lot of sort of things on the pedal steel as far as open strings that uh, might be real familiar concepts to you. Uh, for example, uh, Tim, let me hear an E chord there, please, sir. Like for example, if we were to play steel guitar rag, then we know that this is the kind of thing that open strings and the pedal steel or, or the steel guitar is made for, right? So that's the kind of open string thing we're used to on the steel guitar, where we take a, a, a key like E there because we got all these E notes, and we play all these stuff, you know, using the bar to add other notes in. And that's a real common theme on the, on the pedal steel, right? So, or even the even the steel before pedals, that was a, a very common theme. Steel guitar rag predates pedals. So, so that's the sort of idea that is this pretty common on the steel guitar. And another idea for open strings that is pretty common on the steel guitar is something like this, where we might take the bar and we might have that E string ringing in the top and the bar is fretting under it here, and we might drone that and play some lines underneath it. So that's a sort of a, op a neat open string idea that, that happens on the steel guitar from time to time. All right, now other open string ideas that uh, that happen on the steel guitar. Uh, concepts like something called chromatic approach. That's where we're sort of uh, leading up to the to the chord that we're aiming at. And a real good example of this is a uh, is a, a, a like a lick that Ralph Mooney did on a on a Wailing tune. Uh, uh, just because you asked me to, he's got this little lick that's that's uh, they're going like like this. And that's a situation where. All that stuff is the the chord of F, but where you're going on and off with the bar to utilize an open string to get that chromatic a approach effect, right? So, so that's a, an entirely different kind of open string thing. And then, obviously, if we think about using open strings in like the key of E, well now if we push our pedals down to get that A chord there, Tim, well, then we can do similar stuff in the key of A, right? Where, you know, that same kind of steel guitar rag thing. 
and basically what we're doing there is we're just hunting out other scale notes that have to do with A. And so in keys like E and A, maybe we're real used to the idea of using open strings. But what I want to talk a little bit more about today is using open strings in maybe some not so obvious places. And one of the key elements to this idea of open string magic has a lot to do with how I personally choose to tune the pedal steel. Okay. Now, um, as many of you probably know, and maybe of you a lot of you do, a lot of people use some sort of tempered tuning system on the pedal steel. And I don't do that. I tune, I tune the pedal steel exactly the same way the keyboard is tuned, where every note on it is tuned to equal temperament. And so, for example, a lot of people might tune their G sharp strings on the pedal steel, their third string and their sixth string. They might tune those flat a little bit because that, that major third sounds a little softer to the ears when they just play across the chord, right? So some people might hear that and they might think that string sounds sharp to them. Although, Tim, if you'll play me a G sharp there, you'll notice that that is a spot on match to that. Okay. And so one of the central themes of this open string magic concept is that every single note on the open strings of the steel, every single note with the pedals, every single knee lever, every change on my steel, when I turn on my tuner, I want it to be straight dead in the center of the needle, just like it is on the piano. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and this is going to allow me to utilize some open strings that might not otherwise be available to me if the change itself was pretty drastically detuned. Mm -hmm. So, for example, what if we had to play a tune that had a chord like uh, C-sharp minor, Tim? Well, now we know that to play the C-sharp minor chord on the pedal steel, all we have to do is go over here and push the A pedal down. And there's that chord. Now, a lot of times, steel players will tune that A pedal flat, that C-sharp note, because it's the major third when they push both pedals down for that A chord. They want that major third to sound soft, just like they wanted that open G sharp to sound soft. But if Tim plays me that C sharp minor chord again, I'm gonna let this pedal off just a little bit. That's about how it's about how hmm. flat a lot of people tune that string. Hmm. And so, if I were playing against Tim in a song that happened to be in the key in, instead of, of with sharp, me <laughs> that would be uh well tim tim's uh tim seems to think that that might clash a little bit <laughs> well it was just it was an interesting choice of word that you were playing against me okay. instead of with me yeah, tim, just, you're, tim you're always on my team man that's I'm, right I'm never, i've never played against you i promise <laughs> and 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 this is by the way this is one of the ways we can be a team player on the pedal stage. well absolutely because i was feeling like when you were just playing the note we, we weren't it was somewhat against what I was doing here. Exactly. What was not on the same team. And so we get on the same team by tuning everything straight up, right? Makes sense. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to try a little experiment. We're going to see how many different keys we can find some way to utilize some open strings. So we already covered E a little bit. Let's go to F. Now I did that hammer on thing. <laughs> That's really kind of a cheat, right? That's not really got much to do with the key of F. But I got a knee lever, like everybody here, that raises my E strings up to F. Okay. Now, this is one of those things where uh, most tempered tuning charts, this note is tuned really flat. About seven cents, in some cases, I've seen on certain charts, right? Hmm. 
But now, if Tim plays me that F chord, and I've got my open string with my knee lever engaged, and it's exactly in tune. Now, I can still do that same thing we did in E, where I now have that as a drone over the top, and I'm playing stuff under that. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Okay. And I can even do things where, like, for example, uh, Buddy Emmons did this trick on his awesome instrumental version of Danny Boy's intro, where he did this thing where he started by having that string open in the key of F, and he, he uses this in his intro lick. The utilization of the open string there, right? So by, by making sure that that lever is all the way in tune, it gives me options for open stuff in the key of F, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now let's go on up to F sharp. Tim? Now, F sharp is a great open key because we have an F sharp note right in the top, and we also got one right here on the seventh string. Again, dead in tune with that chord. And that, again, allows us all those options. If we want to drone stuff up here on the top, we can do that. Okay. Open string options for the key of F sharp. All right, let's go up to G, Tim. All right, now, at first glance, there's not many open string notes that have much to do with the key of G, but if we go up here and we play this G chord, we notice some pretty interesting things. Like, for example, if we had to play a G scale and we were just going down through G scale and we went... We noticed that we could go... And that F sharp string out there is a scale note for G. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we can lift the bar off and that open E is a scale note for G. And then we could lift the bar off here and that open B note is a scale note. So in other words, here we go, we go. All kind of stuff in G utilizing open strings. Mm -hmm. And if we have our A pedal down, now we could also play pull off of that and that's usable note and what do you know every string string or well almost every string it with as long as we have that b, b pedal down is somehow usable in g as long as we end on a g note and so we get into using all these things where we can pull off hammer on all these options for open strings, right? You could play some kind of roll pattern. Whatever, right? Doesn't matter what we play, just we know that those are all usable notes. All right, let's go up to G sharp. See what happens. Well, now G sharp, again, we have we got that note built right in. And that automatically gives us options, right? We can still do that thing where we drone it over the top. We can do that thing where we hammer it on and pull it off. Any number of things because it's there's options in G sharp. All right, now we get to A. Well, A is an awesome key to play open stuff on the pedal steel. We get so many options for A, right? You know, we can play all the hammer on stuff. We can play all the do that pull off thing for rolls. Uh, we can even play crazy stuff like hammer ons that just keep going forever. All kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, all right. Let's go to B flat. Now, B flat could be a bit of a challenge. We just don't have that many notes available to us that work with B flat. Now, you may, 
as I do, you may have a, a, a lever on your guitar that lowers your B strings to B flat. And if that's the case, well, that offers us some options. If you don't happen to have that, remember that one of the coolest features of the pedal steel is chromaticism. So say we're playing something that we can kind of get away with playing some stuff that's outside of the scale, right? Well, if we could do that, then we might have some options in B flat, you know. Okay, it might get a little wacky at times. It might, you know, maybe we can get something out of that B flat. Maybe we can't. We don't know, right? But the thing of it is, is there's always the possibility to explore for open notes in every key. Okay, so now let's see about B. B is an awesome key for open notes on the pedal steel. One of the reasons is because we have the open B chord built right into the tuning. If we play the first string, the second string, and the fifth string, and then we can even go on and continue that down on the seventh and tenth string, we got the B chord built right in. So B is awesome for open stuff on the pedal steel because you can play all sort of things where you drone those two strings on top. This is really cool for like roll pattern sort of stuff. Another neat feature of B is if you have to play like um, bluesy or rock and rolly sort of things in B, it's a, it's, it's a cool key because you can pull off from this second fret thing and get a lot of neat bluesy kind of scale stuff. So a lot of cool open string options in the key of B on the pedal steel. One of my favorites for sure. Okay, now we go to C. Well, again, at first glance, not that many things available to us in C, except maybe, say we go down here to the third fret with the pedals down. Well, now all those open string things that we could do in G where we pull off, we can transpose all that. So that's open string stuff in C, mm -hmm. right? Uh, okay, now we go to C sharp. Well, in C sharp, we have the option of uh, adding, just going with that A pedal down. Now, in this one, we also have the option, if our guitar has it, to lower that second string. Okay. And again, both of those notes tuned straight up on the meter so that they match the so that they match the the, the keyboard. And then now, so now we got all kind of options available in C sharp. even outside wacky things, right? All right, now we move up to D. D, an another really, really cool key on the pedal steel to play open strings in. For the same reason, we can again lower that second string. Now, a cool feature of that second string lower like that is this is also great in G because it's the fifth and we can do like dobro style droney things. So that's a cool trick for both of those keys is to lower that second string. All right, now E flat. E flat, what well, we got? We got a built in open string for E flat. And so, there again, if that string were not tuned straight up on the meter, that would deny us the opportunity of an open string in what a key that we probably wouldn't ever think of using it in. And now here we go all the way back to E. And we have just went through all 12 keys and we got to use open strings in every one of them and at no point did any of those notes ever clash with the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Now, basically all we talked about was uh, major chords and uh, some minor chords. We talked about like, what if we had to play C sharp minor or whatever, okay? Well, we know there's other kinds of chords, right? 
What if we had to play, say, a diminished chord? Again, this is one of those things that most typically uses that lever that raises the E's to F. And if this lever were tuned flat, Tim, play me a F diminished chord. All right. Now, if that lever were tuned flat, <laughs> and now that was the root. If that was the root of our chord and it were tuned flat, then you see what kind of trouble that would get us mm -hmm, in, right? Mm -hmm. But now, since we're talking about this crazy diminished chord thing, diminished chords, if, if we're used to using them at all, you know that they have this neat trick. They're divisible by three. In other words, you take that chord, you move it three frets, and it inverts itself. You move it three more frets, same thing happens again. You move it three more frets, same thing happens again. And when you move it one more time, what do you know? We're back to the octave. Now that tells us that if the octave works and anything divisible by three works, that stuff like this could happen. Is there any rhyme or reason to that? Not at all. However, there's a formula to it, and it says as long as any place I put the bar is something divisible by three, it's always going to be F diminished. Okay? <laughs> now, say we had to play another interesting sort of chord. Play me a A augmented chord, Tim. Okay. Again, uses that lever that if it were tuned flat, that probably would not sound so good against that chord, right? Now, do we have to play, do, how often do we have to play a diminished or augmented chord? Probably not very often, but if we did have to play it, it works somewhat like that diminished thing, except it's divisible by stuff in four. So we could take it and go... <clears throat> and now we're back at that octave again. And that same crazy thing we did with that diminished chord now all of a sudden applies with this augmented one. Any musical use for that? Well, you can't ever tell. <laughs> So, the point of all this is, if you have all of these strings tuned straight up on the meter, you never cut yourself off from any of these options. And, right. and that's the central theme that I want to try to get at here when discussing the concept of open string magic on the pedal steel. See what you can come up with that. See if you can find any cool new open string ideas and share them back with us. Thanks to special guest Tim Crispin today, and we'll see you next time. My pleasure. Lab. See the equipment our pros use at the best prices anywhere online. Support small business and save.